right, so welcome everybody into another episode of Crusaders. It's a special day. We're at Worth the Pour with Michael and Amanda here from Virginia Distilling, and we're going to talk about their very first three store picks here with Michael. So introduce you guys to yourselves. Ladies first. All right. Well, hey, I'm Amanda Beckwith, lead blender at Virginia Distillery Company, and I'm up in our cask house in Central Virginia, and very excited because throughout the past few years, I've been finding these honey casks and tucking them away, and uh, that brings me to Worth the Pour. Hey, everybody. My name is Michael Reyes. Um, I'm the owner here of Worth the Pour. We're located in Louisville, Texas. We're so happy to have uh, Virginia Distillery Company and their current conviction line as our first three store picks. Um, these are something really special for us. They're the first picks we've ever done, and they are absolutely delicious. We also partnered with um, Folds of Honor. So 10% of every bottle that we do sell is going to be going to that charity. And Folds of Honor is a very, very special charity. They basically work with giving uh, education to families who have lost their loved ones um, as being service members. I love that. Yes, we appreciate anything with the military. We're big juice fans of and support of it. Our whole families are all military. So anything like that's important to us as well. So another reason we partner with Worth the Poor is we're very selective what stores we'll go to. And this is one of the few that was the first one we've actually partnered with uh, on the Dallas side of town. So it's uh, very, very important to us to pick someone that treats their customers the way that they do here at Worth the Poor and then picks amazing barrels and uh, supports the military and things like that. So. All right, I guess let's take it away. Can you talk to Amanda about what makes these special and uh, what made you decide to get into all this fun stuff? Well, I'm in love with single malt whiskey. And so being part of the largest independently owned American single malt producer, I get to play around with incredible casks because unlike bourbon or rye that has to age in new charred oak, single malt can age in so many different types. So the foundation of a lot of our maturation is in these used bourbon casks. So their first life was coming from Kentucky. They held a uh, brown form and usually sometimes Willet okay. or other places, but I believe this cask was a Woodford Reserve. And uh, mm -hmm. so it had several years of life making bourbon and then we take it. And by aging our single malt in whiskey barrels that have already had the harsher tannins taken out, all those beautiful fermentation notes still get to, to come through. They're not masked by the dominating tannins. So I love having notes like pineapple, orange, citrus, a um, little bit of cedar spice coming through, but then all that butterscotch, apricot, apple, all of that coming through. It just makes me really happy because it feels very complex and balanced. All right. So I guess we might as well get into this first bottle here is this beautiful bourbon cast we can show you guys here. Is this the beautiful green label? It's got this really pretty, uh, you know, ribbon here. It comes with the coin. It comes with a really nice case that locks. It's just a really nice extra features they feature here from Virginia Distilling that nobody else really does anything like that. They're just like, here's a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> You definitely did a great job with that, and it stands out in many, many ways. Yeah, and it has a really nice display in the stores, a nice thing in the canister that talks about each of the groups that are involved. So it's it's a really, really nice thing to take home for presentation purposes. I can't take any credit for that. We have this really cool brand team, and they meet every Friday, and they just have a geek fest where they say, what's some crazy idea we can do? And every week, they'll select one of them to just go for. And so that's how things like that happen. They just have a lot of fun. So I just worry about what goes inside the bottle, but they have a lot of fun with the bottle itself. Hey, that's perfect. It worked out well. <laughs> hey. I think we've both had plenty of ones there. Well, the bottle's cool, but what's inside's not good. This is the case where the bottle's cool and what's inside is really, really good. <laughs> so that's always a plus. Awesome. Yeah, All I right. think we have um, bourbon cask number 463. So our single malt went in back in the early spring of 2016. So this is six plus. Um, and I was really stunned by this like pineapple, baked apple, cinnamon note coming through. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> definitely do taste some of those fruit notes and they definitely do come through really really well yeah surprisingly i just got warm apple pie i think like you said that's the very first thing you come up with and it's mm. under center on the finish yeah i would pair this with apple pie in a heartbeat and maybe it would be amazing yeah yeah i think that would be really quite tasty on there mm -hmm. see if it knows for you real quick same with the apple and center on the nose too 
little bit of black pepper, some caramel. Well, yeah, a lot of nice, you know, typical ex bourbon cast notes you're getting on here, but just smells you. And then what's the what's the proof on this thing? I know it's pretty high. Yeah, this is a fifty eight point eight, I believe. Yeah. Um, this was interesting. So the highest ABV we can fill casks at is sixty two point five, and that's okay. our filled proof for every Fun. cask. But Virginia is so humid that in that process of aging, breathing in and out, the alcohol is evaporating out, but the humidity is bringing water vapor in. So we have natural reduction in cask. The lowest I've had is like wow. 6.8. Crazy, right? Wow. I think I've yeah. never heard, of, heard of that anywhere. It's That's the opposite really cool. as you guys in Texas because you're drier, more arid in, in right. most Texas. There are exceptions, but yeah. No, but yeah, this is, this is truly an exceptional. This, you don't see a whole lot of single cask in just X bourbon at that in American single malt anyway. Oh, this yeah. is truly an exceptional one. Mm -hmm. But I really like this a lot. Yeah. I'm so glad. I got very attached to it. So I'm glad that uh, Zach was able to find a loving home for it with you all. <laughs> so is it hard when you have to go like, well, this is one of my favorite barrels. Then they have to go sell it off. So is that hard for you to, <laughs> to sell off your babies? <laughs> At first, emotionally, it was, but I found with people like Zach and Mark in Texas, they, they yeah. feel a lot of love for the whiskey as well. So I know that they're invested in finding the right home for it and not just any home. I feel okay. like they're my kids. Yeah. <laughs> the babies are spread out entire, right? across the entire country. Yes. As long as they're well loved and cared for, once, once they find a new home, that's what matters. That's exactly it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then hopefully they come down here worth the pour and buy a bottle and take it home to their self and then introduce it to their friends so they can come buy some as well. Some That's of your babies so cool. definitely already have a home in my home. Mm -hmm. So love it. <laughs> Mine too. They That's are delicious. So to, yeah, to see what single malt can look like from Virginia. You know, it's just uh, an interesting experience to showcase the environment off. And are you the only single malt distillery in Virginia? Or there are there a few others there as well now? There are, I believe, two others that are much smaller that dabble with it, and okay. uh, they make really cool stuff, just very different than ours. So they'll do things okay. like uh, smoked wood chips or smaller casks. Mm -hmm. okay. but, but yeah, it's uh, hopefully just a matter of time before more come along. Yeah, so everything you guys do is at least 53-gallon barrels? Yes. Okay. These are the smallest. We go up to the 600-liter sherry butts that are Jeez. in the back. So I guess, is that the next one we're on? Is the 600-liter sherry yes. butt? Yes. All right, let's um, move over to the sherry, which is the beautiful yeah. red one here with a ribbon. So uh, when we were getting started, I had a mentor, Dr. Jim Swan, and he set us up Ooh. with this bodega in Spain that he was working with. And uh, they have been so phenomenal to work with. Every single year we put in a big order and they send us these really high quality casks. So um, this was made from American White Oak Quercus Alba, um, but it spent decades on uh, a Solera in Spain before we got it. And it held Pedro Jimenez. So you're going to get a lot of decadent fruit notes because um, PX Sherry mm -hmm. is made by laying the grapes out in the sun on mats to really concentrate those sugars. So you're going to get some really beautiful um, candied hazelnuts, orange oil. I got coconut um, a little bit, cocoa, baking spice for sure that just lingers for days. Yeah, tons of dates, raisins. Fig. Good um, yeah, fig. Mm -hmm. Some uh, like some toasted almonds. Yes. I guess that's how you learn. I'm still getting used to it, um, being on this side of everything. And as you people talk about things and people and you hear more, you start to pick up those notes and you start to, but you always have to tell yourself, is it just because they're saying it or is it you? <laughs> and then you trust yourself more. And I've yeah, definitely exactly. seen and noticed that. Yeah, it's got also like a beautiful powdered sugar with like pralines. Oh, yes. Oh, that's yes. My I took my brother one of these. He's like, is it really they're gonna like, promise? It's good. He's like, oh, this thing is amazing. So <laughs> yes. We we can attest. We own these at our houses. These things are amazing. Mm -hmm. We would never on this show ever promote anything that we didn't think was just awesome because why would we bother? It's, it's not our reputation is more than that. And these are amazing casks. Yeah, this if you like Sherry, if you look like a Glendronic or something like along those lines, this is just as good, if not better. I really love it. plus because the, these ones also about six years old on this one. It's just under six years old, six and years old. Uh, it's sixty percent ABV or just under. So this okay. is the highest of the three um, okay. in ABV. Fifty nine point four. So yeah, very close. Yeah, 
And again, like if you want to add water, open it up, it will be beautiful. I just have it at this ABV though, and I love it. And it will open mm -hmm. up for hours and hours if you just sit it out. Oh yeah, I, I love to sit with it for like an hour or so and see how it changes. It's almost always better after the hour. Yes. Oh, my team makes fun of me all the time because I'll have a couple of favorite glasses on my desk and be like, don't touch those. <laughs> it's still so <laughs> good. And they'll be empty, but they're still, a, I call it the fond du that like fountain of aroma coming out. Oh, absolutely. I always smell the glass like the next day to see what it turns. And it's like, and then, you know, it was a really good whiskey. It's got a great yeah. nose the next day and an empty glass. Oh, this that I can attest to doing a lot. I do that quite often. And uh, my wife, Brenda, she always wonders, what are you doing? You're smelling an empty glass. <laughs> I'll walk around with it sometimes, have my nose in it, and everybody's like, is she crazy? <laughs> I think that's a part of the deal in this whole industry is you have to be. It's, it's just a requirement. <laughs> I have a couple screws loose to be in it. Exactly. But it's <laughs> a good thing. Otherwise, the creativity goes out the window. Oh, yeah, but yeah, this is just a massive sherry bomb. I mean, just truly massive. Oh, it's so good. And each sip you do get different things as it comes across i guess your tongue open your your taste buds open up and you yeah. take in more and more absolutely yeah it's like a major cream brulee on this with the brown and the whole burnt sugar on top definitely get that yes oh it's so good and it pairs so well if you like dark chocolate or oh, like prosciutto and some really good cheeses oh yeah with cheese. i bet with some really good with cheese yes yeah that's pretty amazing stuff I'm going to go home and make a charcuterie board now. There. Because, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm flying to Texas. <laughs> See, you're, you're making lunch for her now. Oh, it's always open. It's tremendously good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you want cash strength, amazing sherry, this is definitely one to pick up for sure. I love this stuff. No one's ever complained about any of these things, that's for sure. No. They're like, oh, it's really freaking good. I'm like, they're like American single is good. Yes, it's really good. And it's funny, should be blind people that are usually Scotch drinkers and like they're like, oh, it's like Scotch. No, that's American single malt. They're like, really? I'm like, yeah, and it's awesome. And then now they have a giant collection of American single malt at that point in time. They're like, what did you do to me? I'm like, sorry, this is what happens around here. It's a dangerous but really fun world. Exactly. Exactly. All right, I move on to the cuvee now. Tell everybody what the cuvee is and all that good stuff as well, please. Yeah. Well, also going with um, our mentor, Dr. Jim Swan, he had placed this order of barrels for a distillery in Taiwan that he was working with. And uh, apparently Speyside Cooperage beat him to it. And it was going to be months before they had any he used bourbon casks for them. And so he reached out to a couple of friends in Spain and Portugal, and they created this cask type. So everybody's known DHR, Rechar for forever. Yeah. What they did is they shaved the inside staves we do it now just like three millimeters, toast, and then blast with a little char. And then we move our whiskey in. So that process has come to be known as STR in the industry for shave, toast, rechar, or recooper. But wine casks aren't charred to begin with, so we didn't like that at all. <laughs> so we okay. went with this cuvee because that first run of a premium wine in Spain is often called the cuvee. You could also hear it like in champagne production too. It just means okay. high quality. And so, yeah, in their first life, these barrels held a premium red wine blend. And you'd recognize all the varietals. We just really love the quality of all that red fruit that just gets deeper and deeper into the staves. So this is like red fruit for days. Uh, I get raspberry, cherry, blood orange. Then the chocolate comes through. And uh, I just got this cocoa, cedar, butterscotch incredibleness from this cask that just hooked me. Yeah. Is the the red wine where the a lot of the coloring comes through or is that just from an extended age? A bit of both because there is that shaving uh, and then the, the toast and then the char. It does allow a little bit of the wood sugars to kind of just be more porous and open as the whiskey is making its way back through. And so you are able to get to that red layer a little bit faster. And so, yeah, the wine, that influence comes through on the nose, flavor, palate, and also appearance. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is definitely a very beautiful dark whiskey. Mm -hmm. This has definitely been a fan favorite. Ah. Uh, yeah, the one I took to my buddy the other day, he's like, oh, this is so good. I'm like, yeah, told you it would be. And uh, a lot of people that we've sampled, and I usually bring out the line to sample them on it, they're like, 
really like that. I really like that. I love that. <laughs> and a lot of them are, you know, they're surprised at how much they take to it because they don't normally hear cuvee. They're, oh, yeah, I like, I, they, they want a bourbon or they want the sherry. Right. But it's that unknown and they dive mm -hmm. right into it. So, yes, I'm taking home more today. <laughs> it's another good reason to come out here to take home extra whiskey. <laughs> so. Yeah, all that chocolate. I find the more this one sits and opens up, the more milk chocolatiness comes forward. Making yeah, it worse now. Yeah, like a black cherry, uh, like vanilla yogurt. Mm. Yeah, with like a dark chocolate. Yeah, like uh, sprinkle all over it. A little bit of granola. Some honey. Oh, it smells wonderful. Who was it? Somebody had said this reminded them of a snack pack. I think that was Mark, I think. I think Mark might have said, yeah, I think he said it was like a chocolate snack pack. I do like snack packs. Those are delicious. So do my children. <laughs> can't, keep them, can't keep them in the house to eat them all. That's not the pairing I would have gone for, but yes, <laughs> why not? <laughs> I think we'll try to like homemade pudding rather than the snack pack yeah. pudding. I'm so. going to give you a hard time for this. <laughs> Well, what I would pair this with is like a New York cheesecake, that graham cracker. Oh, nice. oh, oh, yeah, that'd be yeah. good. Because there's this cherry note coming through that I think, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like that drizzle on the top that goes down. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, it's delicious. Yeah, I just, I mean, they're all really thick, but this one's just like extra thick. <laughs> like, it's like dessert. Is, yeah, it's totally dessert whiskey. Yeah, you could just finish your night with one of these. This is the perfect finish for the evening. Oh, yeah. And plus, yeah, same thing. The proof is this, this one's super high. It's, yeah, 59.2. So these are all super high, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing is, it doesn't taste like it's that hot either. And that's yeah. the thing that makes it slightly dangerous. Like, yes. Remember, there's alcohol, a lot of alcohol in this. Definitely do not drink their proof, for sure. No. I said plenty of ones that are, you know, 95 that are way hotter than this. And this yeah. does not taste this at all. It's That's one of the criteria. Yeah, that it can just be so balanced and drink at this ABV. Because sometimes I'll pull a cask and be like, this is gorgeous, but I know it needs to be reduced or mm -hmm. blended with something else to balance it out. Not these. No. So is that you find most of your uh, single barrels come out at this point at around 120? Yeah, most of them about that. Okay. That seems to be the the window that I really like um, for the single cask picks. I just think they have that structure and backbone that the alcohol provides and the mouthfeel, but the flavors are all right there and balanced out. Okay. It's a sweet spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, those are spectacular. Yeah, because I don't like. There's really very few Cuvier casts that are in general that are used. I've had a few other Scotch ones, but of course, most of they call them STRs, but the same thing. But you don't see a whole lot of them though in general. It was just nice and times, different. Yeah, they'll often finish in them for a couple months instead of doing the primary maturation. That's true too. And I like yeah. having as much time just aging. You're right. I don't know if I've ever had any that are just. That's a good question. I don't know if I've ever had just that kind of the entire maturation in it. I have to think about that. I'm not sure. You're right. They may just all be finishes. So what made you guys decide to actually mature them in those casks as opposed to finish them? I think at first it was sort of this, we don't know our climate and we don't know how our whiskey is going to interact. So why not have these as learning mm -hmm. moments? Okay. And now I know um, better and can predict what flavors mm -hmm. are going to come out. But having these really gorgeous fresh casks coming in and being able to fill with our new make immediately was a really cool experience. And I think it just has shown beautifully. Now I do some cask finishing, uh, nothing currently released for the Courage and Conviction line, but our VHW line, we do a lot of finishing on. And I started out doing just three year aged of our casks and then it was all right, four and five years. So I think this is going to be a really fun window for more finishing because I've had more time to learn and get those flavors right. Oh, yeah. Do you know what specifically what type of wines they were prior that were in these casks? There was a lot of Garnacha, um, some Tempranillo, I think some Tariga Nacional from the ones in Portugal. I think oh, okay. Very cool. Yeah. If anybody's from Texas, you know, Tempranillo is a big thing we grow in Texas as well. So yeah. 
it's a good thing if you guys are familiar with that. Obviously, it's a major Spanish uh, grape as well. But that's just to give you guys an idea of what might flavors you might get. But delicious is the flavor you need to remember. Mm-hmm. That's the one that only matters. Freaking delicious. But yeah, it's pretty spectacular stuff. So yeah, like I said, they're uh, down here at Work the Poor, all three of them. And like I said, 10% of each sale goes to Folds of Honor. So all that good stuff. Uh, but come see them. You can try all sorts of fun stuff while you're here as well. But this is delicious. And uh, Amanda, thank you very much. This was awesome. And uh, thank you. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.